Hello again and welcome back. My name is Vados and in this video we're going to be talking about the electronics and automation of Core Keeper. So first I want to cover the electronics. In order to get to electronics you need to make the electronics table which you get through the iron workbench. It's right there. It requires eight wood, eight copper, and eight iron bars which grants you access to all the wonderful circuits and objects that you can use to make electronics. The main source of electronics is going to be the generator and the wires. The generator does not require any sort of fuel as of right now. It is just an infinite power source. It just runs and runs and runs. Never runs out of power. Pretty fantastic in my opinion. And then the wire is obviously how you transport electricity. It is worth noting that the generator can only power up to 14 blocks away. If you look down here, this guy is 15 blocks away as this is 14 blocks away. And you can also kind of see based on the coloring of the wire that it seems like it gets weaker and weaker as it goes on. So that covers the generator and the wiring. The next thing that we're going to go into is all the circuitries and everything and how they work and the understandings of them. So first thing, we have the switch. Relatively simple. You flip it. Power's on. Just, you know, on and off switch. Relatively simple. Then we have the delay circuit. The delay circuit can be powered from three sides. You have the left, the right, and the top in this case. And then it'll come out the side that has the three little dots on it. Literally just a one second delay, that is all it does. So if I flip the switch one second later, the light will turn on and vice versa going in reverse. That's all the delay circuit is. Now you have the logic circuit. The logic circuit is pretty simple. It confused me at first. I was like, what's the point of this? But it makes sense once you do it. So it needs to be powered from two sides. It, just like the the delay circuit, it has three ways that it can be powered, which, you know, left, right, and top in this case. If I turn this on, you'll see that the light doesn't turn on. If I go over here, light doesn't turn on, even if the circuit lights up. If I turn them both on, now the light turns on. Relatively easy, pretty simple. Finally, it brings us to the electrical stick. Unfortunately, I have no idea what this does. Nobody does. The devs have not explained what it does. I don't even, I'm convinced not even the devs know what this does. So this thing is useless. So finally, the, with all of that, the only use that I could come up with for this stuff is a door. They have the electrical door that, you know, requires power, that kind of thing. And so you could do a double switch door so that way you could like open it on one side go on the other close it on the other side so that way things and i guess well maybe not people but so that way monsters can't get into your base or whatever however you want to do that that's the only use i could think of for these things so and that is uh the last two things to explain is like this is the electrical door that's exactly how it works you just supply power to it you can put a switch it will open and close whenever you flip it. And then also, as you saw throughout all of that, this is the light, which as you can see, illuminates very well. It is a very awesome thing. I highly recommend it. Using them, they are phenomenal. They're amazing. So now I want to go in and cover automation. So automation, uh, in order to get it, you need to get Scarlet Ore, which you found up in like the jungle place. And then you need the Scarlet Orc Bench, which then allows you to craft the automation table. Automation table has three things, which is the conveyor belt, the drill, and the robot arm. These are all very self-explanatory. The conveyor belt, an item will go onto it, it will move it. The drill is used to drill the big nodes that you'll find. Um, like here's one, uh, they'll show up in these like little squares like this. So like here's one right here. If I go over there, you'll see a giant node, which I'm about to show you guys here in a second. And that's what the drills do. The robot arm will move things from one spot to another um, only within a three block range. So like if I was the robot arm, I'd pick one up from here and then I'd move it to here. It will take from like conveyor belts, furnaces, chests, whatever, and put onto conveyor belts or in furnaces and chests. Relatively easy, all pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is the drill setup here. You've probably already seen some things like this, but I do want to explain some things about this. 
Having more drills is more efficient, but not in the way that you would think of. You're not going to get more ore by having more drills. You're just going to get a single piece of ore faster. So with one drill, it takes two minutes exactly to get one piece of ore. When you add a second one, it goes down to like a minute five. And then when you add another one, it goes down to like 50 seconds and then so on and so forth. All the way to where when you have eight drills, it takes 30 seconds for a piece of ore to get put out on one of them. And it's random. It doesn't have a thing. It will just kind of plop out on any of them. It doesn't matter. That's what it is. And then you can uh, do this setup to where they'll come out onto a conveyor belt. They'll end up at a at one of these robot arms to where they'll go into your smelter and then you'll just have endless resources. These things take a long time to deplenish. Like it takes like five hours for one of these to go away. You'll get about 500 like resources from whichever one, like in this case, Scarlet Ore. I'd get about 500 Scarlet Ore from one of these. Um, and that's the case for all of them. I did testing on every single one of them. Every single one of them is the same. doesn't matter. These nodes all work exactly the same. So if you have eight drills around them, it takes 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds, you'll get a piece of ore. It takes like four or five hours to break one of these. So you can easily AFK this. You can just go AFK and do that. Now, two things worth noting. The drills can hurt you. So uh, when you are setting up, I recommend not... Um, putting down your generator until you have them all set up because you can get pulled into the drill and it can hurt you. It's very easy to get away. It's it's unlikely that you're going to get hurt. Like I intentionally walked into it to be like, oh, does this hurt me? And yes, they do. Uh, second thing to note is monsters can destroy your circuitries and like your drills and everything like that. I went AFK one time. I can't or and yeah, and then I came back. And a bunch of my stuff was destroyed, like several drills, my robot arm, generator, everything was destroyed. And yeah, so I lost a bunch of progress that way, which sucked. So the other thing, too, is with the circuits, uh, with the delay circuit, the logic circuit, robot arm and a drill, if you go up and you get close enough to it, you need to kind of be like right up on top of it. If you press E, at least on computer, um, that's default is E. You can rotate it around so that way it can go any which way you want. You can do the same thing with the drills. And then as you can see, if I can get it here, maybe it won't. Okay. So, but you can, you can rotate things like that. So, but that is all the electricity and automation, logistics and everything of Core Keeper. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below if you guys think I can do anything better or if you want to see anything specifically added to this channel. You guys are awesome. Stay happy. Peace.